now we will read some scripture together. And we will be reading out of the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, in chapter 7, beginning in verse 9, and reading through verse 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. Do you remember when we've heard about palm branches before? When Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, before he was to be crucified, the people were triumphant, waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna to the king. Verse 10, they cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation be belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. May God bless these words of Holy Scripture. And this is what we are promised for a life of faithfulness. For deciding to follow the way of Jesus Christ and making him Lord of our life. We are promised eternity in God's realm where, there, where we will never hunger, thirst, or have any other affliction. We will have come through the great ordeal. And some think this is the apocalypse or the tribulation. I think it's possible that the great ordeal could be the challenges of our life, the struggles that we have here in this earthly realm. And so any struggle that we have carried here, we will no longer carry when we are in the presence of God. We will not have the stress and the busyness and the worry. And so we will have all this time and energy to do nothing but be praising God. And so maybe that's our lesson for today. Less caring of the burdens and more praising of the one who takes them away. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now as we move into our All Saints Remembrance, many of us have things that we are grieving today. In fact, I say during this time of pandemic, we are all grieving something. We are missing out on this, or our children aren't able to do that, or we are not able to be with this loved one. And so it's not just if we are grieving, 
It's how many layers are we grieving? Because maybe we have had a loved one pass on. And so today we acknowledge those losses, but also celebrate that the loved ones that have died and gone before us are in heaven at the throne of God. So let us move into our time of remembrance. We mourn today the loss of life. And I checked this before we started. <laughs> we remember the saints of our churches that have gone home to their eternal reward. Lois Florhaug, Rebecca Sue Gearing. Gordon Etter and Marilyn Fromm. We are for great, forever grateful to them for the work they did passing down their faith to us so that we are able to live a life of hope. There are others that have gone on to glory. And we pause for the thinking or even stating out loud of their names. For so many, the pandemic has taken loved ones we mourn the loss of those close to us and those whose names we do not know. We mourn those who perished while working to save other lives. We mourn those who died, not of pandemic, but of other causes. And we mourn the loss in many cases of our ability to be with them when they passed our loss of gathering together for comfort in the ways we needed so much. We mourn this loss of life. We honor and remember these beloveds. We pray for comfort and peace. Amen. We mourn today the loss of livelihoods. For so many, the pandemic has taken the security of food, shelter, care for families, and medical care. We mourn the loss of businesses that could not withstand the circumstances. These were not just businesses, but dreams born of passion and hard work. We mourn those who find themselves needing to rely on others for help when what they really want to do is to be able to help others. We mourn this loss of livelihood. We honor and remember the dreams now deferred. We pray for sustenance and resilience. Amen. We mourn today the loss of love. Our society's dilemma, centuries in the making, has created such hatred, suffering, oppression, and ill will. 
We mourn the loss of those whose lives were lost to brutality and violence. We mourn the loss of our ability to love one another despite our differences. As beings who deserve to be seen for their inherent beauty and worth. We mourn that black and brown peoples have perished and suffered at the greatest proportion in the pandemic of coronavirus. We mourn the pandemic of racism that still plagues the fabric of our communities. We mourn this loss of love. We honor and remember the work of prophets who proclaim justice. We pray for compassion and change. Amen. We mourn this night the loss of liveliness. For me, it's night as I am recording, but we mourn today the loss of liveliness. For so many, this year has robbed us of our energy, our enthusiasm, and our sense of well-being. We mourn teachers and leaders and caregivers and workers who are struggling to help those in their care, themselves exhausted and needing the sustenance they give to others. We mourn the loss of all who are suffering with anxiety and depression, who are finding it difficult to live each day with fullness or to find hope for tomorrow. We mourn those we have lost to suicide. We mourn those who find themselves addicted to substances in order to ease the burden of pain that feels unbearable. We mourn those who are experiencing their place of shelter as an abusive place from which they struggle to escape. We mourn this loss of liveliness. We honor and remember that each person is precious and whole. We pray for recovery and renewed vigor. Amen. This fifth candle is lit for all of us, for the things that we are grieving, for the things that cause us pain, for those things of grief that layer upon layer upon layer until there's a stacking effect that we might not even be able to process before the next item of grief is placed on top. We pray for a release of our grief. Now we light the tallest candle. The centerpiece. This candle we light as a sign of our belief. We believe in the light that has come and is coming. This light casts its glow on all the surrounding prayers we have prayed. This light resides within us, perhaps dim for a time but always lit, an ember of the holy inside us. This is the light of Jesus Christ. This light reminds us that we are not alone. And so if you have a candle Feel free to light it in remembrance that we are not alone. 
Or some of you may have brought a stone, as we talked about last week. A stone that used to be placed in Jewish tradition upon the graves of those that we love because flowers and other remembrances can blow away, but a stone would remain. And God, we are thankful to you for the servants of remembrance that we can process the emotions, the sadness, the grief that we feel. And I thank Marsha McPhee for allowing this liturgy that she had written um, for Blue Christmas to be adapted for our setting today. Let us pray together. Patient God, sometimes we just don't understand. We don't get it. We want instant gratification for all our needs. We don't want to have to follow directions or instructions. We are impatient. We want you to come down from heaven and solve our problems right now. We don't want to have to think about the problems and we are hesitant to create solutions. When we try to wiggle out of difficult situations, we get even further bound up in our own problems. You ask us to trust you. You invite us to lean on your strong arms of comfort and support. You set us on our feet and give us gifts and talents to use for healing and hope. All these wonderful things you do for us. And still, whine and complain. Please forgive us, Lord. We are a stubborn people. As Jesus reminded the disciples to trust in God's commandments and guidance, so we are called to place our trust and confidence in your presence. Heal our wounds. Calm our spirits and souls. Challenge and encourage our service to humankind. And when at last we enter the land of promise, help us to truly give thanks and rejoice and praise you. Amen. Thank you for being here with me today. And I hope this service has been healing for you. And so let us dismiss today with a blessing. May the Lord guide you and keep you. May the Lord care for you in your grief. No matter how many layers you have stacked, grief upon grief. May the light of Jesus Christ shine in your heart and in your lives so that you may become one of the saints. In the holy name of Jesus we pray, amen.